Welcome back to Music Theory Logic. My name is Andrew, and today I thought it'd be fun to show you how you can write what's called a counter melody. Something really subtle to uh, add some nuance to your track, to add some development. Let's go ahead into my Logic session. So I also used the same session uh, for adding imperfection uh, to your music, something I'm working on for a publisher. I'm trying to really, uh, you know, not add like too much crazy uh, work uh, to my general professional life with this YouTube channel. It's easier said than done, uh, but I'm gonna try to do a lot of videos about things I'm actually doing in the music industry. So uh, this instrumental is not the craziest thing in the world. I'll play it from the beginning, and then I'm gonna write a counter melody basically for the second half of this drop section. So, here it is. <laughs> So hopefully you enjoyed that uh, enough to keep watching again. Even if you don't like the style or the music, you can apply this to whatever kind of music you make. So uh, most uh, music has repetition in it, right? Most music has a melody or a top line, right? This uh, piece is no different. So there's some development happening in that uh, fancy words like I have an arpeggio. So a broken chord in the beginning diminution. So that broken chord happens faster. It doesn't happen. And then we go into the full um, melody, which is very much arpeggio uh, driven. Now you can see if you just look at this, that this melody is going from high to low and then back down. All right. So the word uh, counter typically means opposite, right? So that line was going down. Our counter melody, we're going to uh, go up. And again, this isn't going to be something you hear really hot in the mix, but it's going to be something that adds a lot to the music. So uh, let's play this section. Now, I want to keep this really simple. I'm doing an A minor arpeggio on the main melody. So it's like E, C, A, E, and then up to C, A, E, A, and then to D. All right. I'm going to uh, try to write a melody like that. So I've got this flute by Arturia. I'll do just some steady quarter notes. So A, C, E, D, let's hear that. Let's repeat that. I really like the C there. Then we could add some extra notes in there. All right. Um, so let's take that. Let's humanize it. Again, adding imperfection. It's going to make any anything MIDI based feel better to the human ear which uh, we still are still uh, we are still writing for human beings not composing for uh, AIs quite yet although I imagine 
in the future there will be some sort of AI that is uh, is picking music for Spotify playlists. However, that AI will probably be picking music that human beings find uh, that sound good. So they'll still be looking for some uh, imperfection from the playing. Um, let's hear this in context. So here we go. No counter melody. Put it a little more right. Now that's a pretty active counter melody. Another thing you could do that's definitely gonna work is doing like an A minor arpeggio um, going up on quarter notes, like fully. We could even do half notes. Let's do half notes actually. So like from A, C, E, A. that A minor to D minor four chord so that's an even simpler one again counter melody sounds complicated but it's literally just an additional melody uh, you can create a lot of cool harmonies and textures by doing sort of opposite things. That's what uh, a lot of composers that were using counterpoint uh, compositional techniques uh, were doing. So hopefully that helps. Again, uh, you don't need to make it super complicated, but adding any elements going to break up the monotony of having the same thing repeating the whole time. Hopefully you found that helpful. If you found that helpful, you'd help me out a ton by subscribing to the channel. Once again, my name's Andrew. This is Music Theory Logic. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.